the topic for this video is moments. Moments of forces and moments of couples. First, let's consider moments of forces. You see depicted on the screen a situation of a force in a 3D environment as well as a force in a 2D environment. We'll first begin with the more general case of the force in a 3D environment. You can notice that it is located at some point in space B projecting to some point in space C. So for completeness, we could say that this is the force from B to C. If we're interested in finding the moment of this force about point A, we need to know a couple of other things. First of all, we need to know the distance or the vector that describes the distance between points A and B, and we'll call that the vector r sub a b, denoting the distance from a to b. Note also that this force is, in fact, a vector. Now, we're going to find that the general form for the moment of a force in three dimensions is r cross f. With your understanding of cross products, you know that this cannot be switched. It cannot be f cross r. That will give you the negative of the moment. So it must, it's important that you use r crossed with F, and in this case it's R sub AB crossed with force sub BC, and this generates a cross product, generates a vector. So this moment is actually a vector, and it is going to be <coughs> the cross product of R cross F. That's the most general case in three dimensions. Now, most of what we do in CE300 is in two dimensions. And in this case, following the same logic, we should need to know this distance. We'll call this distance DE, the distance from the point about which we're interested. So we're finding the moment about point D and point E of the force. And this would be true if we were to use the understanding of the cross product, where we would then say this vector distance d sub d e crossed with this force, and let's go ahead and call this force the force from e to g. So if we crossed the distance with that force vector, we would in fact come up with the proper determination of the moment. But this is a little bit more complicated than necessary. If we apply the principle of transmissibility, we know that we can slide this force vector along its line of action until we find the point at which this distance is perpendicular. And we'll just call that the distance that's perpendicular. And in this special case, then, the moment due to the force F about point D is equal to the magnitude of that force vector multiplied by that perpendicular distance. And that is the most general form, or the most more specific form of the moment equation for this for special case in 2D. Thank you. But in many cases, this perpendicular distance will not be obvious. And so what we will very often do is calculate the components of this force F. So now we'll have the x component of the force and the y component of the force. And if we know this orient or this point's coordinates, we'll just call those x and y for that particular point. Then we could say that the moment due to force F about point D would be equal to the moment due to the x component, which would then be actually multiplied by the y perpendicular distance, plus the y component of the force multiplied by this perpendicular distance, which happens to be this x coordinate. In this case, we have applied Varignon's theorem. along with the principle of transmissibility, knowing that we can slide each of these component forces along their lines of action to find these perpendicular distances. So in many cases, you'll want to make use of Varignon's theorem coupled with transmissibility in order to calculate the moment 
of a force about a specific point in two dimensions. Another very common case in CE300 and in other engineering applications is a force couple. Now we need to make sure that we understand the definition of a force couple and there are four components that make us certain that these two forces F1 and F2 are in fact a force couple. First of all, they must be equal. That is, F1 is equal to F2 and we'll just from now on call those F since they have the same magnitude. They must also be opposite direction. As you can see, one is pointing this direction, the other is pointing in the opposite direction. They must also be parallel or separated by some distance and we'll just call this distance D. Notice that this is the perpendicular distance to both forces lines of action. That gives us the distance between those two forces and they must be non-collinear. If all four of these are met, the equation for the moment due to a couple is simply F times that distance that separates them D. Now some of you might think, why is it not 2 times F times D? Because there are two forces that are separated by this distance. Demonstrate the moment about this point and we'll just go ahead and call this point A. If we sum the moments about point A, we have this force F2 times the distance D. We also have force F1. Line of action passes through point A. Its perpendicular distance is therefore zero and it doesn't contribute, which leads us to F times D. Maybe let's sum moments over here at point B. Now in this case, F1 is separated by that distance D, so we have the force times that distance D, and F2 does not contribute to a moment about point B since its line of action passes through that point. Now let's consider a point here in the middle, point C, where each of these distances are now half of D. About point C, force F1 multiplied by D over 2, and force 2 also multiplied by D over 2, sums up, they're both in the same direction, in this case clockwise, sums up to a total of F times D. So there you have an understanding of the moments of a force, as well as the moments of